I was watching a Rampage Jackson uh, best of um, in The Ultimate Fighter and um, came across Kimbo Slice in one of the seasons. Ready, ready? Yeah, I'm ready, uh, buddy. <laughs> realized that I'd never seen a, ki a full Kimbo Slice fight, so Sub. decided to um, Sub, all check it out. Let's see what's going down. I think this was in Miami, in the mean streets of Miami, Florida. The mean, scorching back streets of Miami, Florida. Let's see what's going down. He's fighting two guys here, a guy named Afro Puff and Big Mac. All around the same size, it seems. Okay, right off the bat, um, Afro Max footwork. Uh, his his body positioning is not the best because he's facing his opponent. He's facing Kimbo. Um, what they call I don't know if there's a specific way to describe it, but his he's full frontal. He's facing Kimbo Slice, which puts him at an immense disadvantage. It means that everything's there to be hit. Generally speaking, boxing tradition is going to tell you you want to be as bladed as possible to make sure that you leave as few targets as possible to your opponent. Um, it also helps you to move to be more swift of foot. Um, because uh, when you're facing your opponent completely, it's a lot harder. You can move, if, if you're s uh, swift of foot enough, you can move laterally, you know, pretty well, but going forwards and backwards is a problem. Um, especially if you don't have extensive training, you know, uh, uh, boxing footwork um, and fighting footwork in general is something that that is specifically trained for. It's not something, a lot of people are just have, they just have natural talent so they can kind of just coordinate their feet in whichever way they will. Um, you know, especially in a fight like this, in a chaotic situation like this, you're, you don't know where punches are coming from. You, you know, you're, you're dipping and ducking and bobbing and weaving and slipping every which way. What I like about this moment here, though, I'm going to go ahead and rewind this right here. So um, Kimbo is obviously stalking him. He's trying to use his size, trying to probably, he, he's betting on, uh, you know, his his psychological influence as a monster in the underground fight scene. That was a beautiful um, sequence of slips there. Kimbo is doing a really good job of kind of bobbing and weaving and slipping his opponent's punches. And they're punches that he can pretty much see uh, because his opponent's technique isn't very good at all. Um, Kimbo is... When Kimbo started throwing punches, he's throwing a barrage of punches here. The worst thing that you can do is try to use your hands to kind of try to block every single punch. Um, you just leave your face completely exposed and your hands are completely down. It makes you so much more vulnerable uh, to get clocked on the button. And that's ultimately what happens here. Kimbo's kind of honing in on this, uh, on this gentleman's chin because he's not defensively responsible at all. Um, and it looked like it happened there. He, he basically he just can't stop the onslaught because his footwork is sloppy and um, his, his, his hands aren't contributing to any successful defense so he's just all over the place he doesn't know what's going on because he's not composed at all he's not able to control the pace of the fight the rhythm of the fight he can't control Kimbo at all so Kimbo was just able to walk him down and in this moment is beautiful because what's happening here is he's mentally psychologically he's wrestling with he, he's trying to summon up the courage to stand up and fight but against in a situation where you're so clearly overmatched it was apparent from the get-go that he wasn't going to win this fight. And, um, you know, he's trying to summon the courage to get up and fight, but fighting is no joke. And the reality of, of violence, of real violence, is nothing to scoff at. It's uh, nothing to laugh at. You know, fighting like this on concrete, without any gloves, without any hand protection, without any wraps, things can go south very, very quickly here. So, you know, it takes a lot of daring, a lot of what they call balls, to even put yourself in a position where you're fighting in this way in general so he's already demonstrated enough courage and enough daring um, you know a willingness to try to be great in his own way by even stepping up in the first place so I don't call this man right here the guy in the, with the gray shirt I don't call him a coward at all you know it took a lot of uh, cojones as they say to uh, to even put yourself in that position and he, he what he's doing here is is very smart he's saving himself future pain 
Some people would probably rush and try to call him a coward and say, well, he has no balls. You know, he's a little B-I-T-C-H because he didn't continue to fight. In this situation, it's not a life or death situation. He knows that he's overmatched. He's weighing the odds in his mind, and he made the smart decision to just save him a lot of future trauma. And um, just cut your losses. Cut your losses. There's no need to continue to put yourself in peril, um, especially when you're so overmatched. I do not fault uh, this gentleman at all. He made a very intelligent decision. He swallowed his pride. Um, and he just understood that the best thing to do in this situation was just to walk away. And um, I actually applaud him for that. I do. I, I definitely applaud him for that. Okay, so Kimbo just goes straight to the next guy, which is it doesn't seem to be that big a deal for him because it's clear that he's overmatched. This gentleman here, uh, Big Poppy, I forget his name. I'm just going to call him Big Poppy. His footwork is a little bit better. His stance is... Um, more adequate, but he kind of falls apart once he's faced under pressure. One clear mistake that he's doing, which is a mistake that a lot of amateurs make, is that he bends uh, forward completely at the waist when um, confronted with pressure. When his opponent applies pressure, you can't really do much there in the clinch, especially if you're not trained for it. You have to really be trained to understand how to use the clinch to your advantage Come on. Um, but there that's what I'm talking about you know Kimbo applies pressure he starts throwing a barrage of punches and the first thing he does is bend over at the waist that's one of the worst positions that you can put yourself in especially in a situation like this because not only can you not see any punches coming your way especially if your opponent is, is an uppercut specialist if he's got monster uppercuts and hooks not only can you not see any punches coming but because you can't see them coming when they inevitably connect their impact is magnified. In, it, the impact is intensified because your brain can't anticipate them. Your brain can't mentally anticipate the damage. So it's 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 much more. Uh, you're putting yourself in a very dangerous position when you try to, in your own way, kind of clam up by bending forward at the waist because you think what you're doing, you think you're just ducking a lot of blows. But in a in a situation where you're fighting a guy with a lot of experience who's obviously trained. Um, in hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat in the manner that he is uh, in Kimbo Slice, it's just never a good idea to take your eyes off your opponent. You always want to keep your eyes on your opponent, even if you're outmatched, even if you're not sure where the fight is going to go or how things are going to go. You want to always keep your eyes on your opponent. Excellent, consistently excellent. Consistently, it was a tongue twister. Consistent, consistently excellent execution of the basics leads to success. You don't need to be fancy um, as a fighter, especially if you're only using one discipline, like uh, boxing. You know, you don't need to be fancy. You don't need to be. Um, you don't need to be stylish. You don't need to be cute. All you need to do is just learn how to execute the basics um, excellently, consistently. That's all you need to do. If you can do that, then most of the time you're going to be okay. And your confidence is going to skyrocket because the basics makes a man confident. Becoming competent makes a man confident, especially in, in something as um, relatively straightforward as boxing for most people. Come on. Uh, but yeah, that's, it's pretty much his major mistake, just bending over the waist, taking his eye eyes off his opponent, making himself vulnerable because he's blinding himself. He's become his own worst enemy. Um, and on top of that, he's not, and because of his horrible body positioning, he's not, he's not putting himself in a position where he can actually return meaningful blows. So he, he, by bending forward at the waist, by choosing to bend forward at the waist as his method of, of trying to be defensive, he's actually shooting himself in the foot. It, it's, it's the one pivotal thing that kind of ruins everything. You can get up. And here he's doing the same thing. He's trying to summon the courage to continue despite the fact that he was just out to get, well, he did get laid out, but, you know, he's, uh, he's in a... It's not easy, man. It, it's it's not easy. Fighting is brutal. It's definitely, and I don't think most people. Let's go. Let's go. I don't think that most people truly understand the reality of violence because it's not something that you can really grasp utterly and completely understand unless you've been through it. And and it doesn't you, you know, it doesn't even have to get to the point where you're fighting in some kind of underground fight club uh, to do it. You know. 
taking a one kickboxing class, you know, if you've never done kickboxing before, you've never done a martial art before, that right there will open your eyes up to how, will open your eyes up to the violent possibilities because you're going to be put in a situation where you're watching people that are so much better than you execute techniques that you can't even dream of perfecting, you know? As an absolute beginner, it's a very humbling, very humbling experience, and and um, you know I know that word intimately because I have been humbled uh, more times than I can count uh, when it comes to uh, uh, you know uh, trying to challenge myself against other men. I've been humbled so many times. Um, it really broadens your perspective on the reality of violence. How much, how, how, how little of a joke violence actually is. It's entertaining. It always will be entertaining. Because risk is entertaining. And what's the greatest risk that a person can, can, can do is when they risk their body. When you risk your... 21. When you risk everything that makes you you. When you risk your very life. That right there. Kind of dancing with death, waltzing with the possibility of death, will always be the greatest form of entertainment that exists. Yeah, he just, it looked like he ducked too when uh, Kimbo threw that uppercut. He adjusted, he saw that his opponent liked to duck a lot. So he, he's trying to start a nice jab, but he ducked right into it. Yeah, that was his undoing. He's trying to get a jab going, which is commendable, you know, uh, but he ducks into an uppercut. It looked like it hit him on the temple, not necessarily on the chin. So at this point, I would not fault him at all if he just gave up. Um, there's no shame in losing to someone that's better than you. That's a lesson that you learn as well. If you do any kind of martial training, it's, um, it's something that you learn very quickly to just accept and just push through and help and help that revelation allow you to grow. It's ne there's nothing shameful in losing to a better man, losing to someone who's actually better than you. And plus, if you have the right mindset, when you do put yourself in that kind of situation and you lose, it gives you a new goal to try to reach, you know? Okay, well then, that's the, that's the guy that I want to beat. He's better than me, so I'm going to train to beat him. Or I'm going to train to beat maybe his protege, you know? He has a, he has a lot of courage. I, I will give him this. Big poppy has got some courage. Um, he's got some cojones. 17. Eight. That, you know, some people like to say, well, he's either very courageous or he's very stupid. Either one of the two. Sometimes it's hard to tell. I, most of the time, me personally, it's easy to tell when someone's got courage or they're very stupid. In this case, um, you know, he's trying to prove something. It's it's clear that he, ha he has ambition in this sense. Is it the right kind of ambition? That's debatable. A lot of people would say no. Trying to make something of yourself in such a risky situation in such a risky world as underground fighting. Um, you know, a lot of people would say that it's not worth it in the long run. Um, I would agree. Um, but you can't help but respect it when men put themselves at risk to try to become great at anything or try, try to make something of themselves in the world in any way that they can. It's very respectable when you see it. A genuine effort to try to overcome especially when you're you, you're punished and especially when facing impossible odds how many men even when faced against impossible odds stand up over and over again to confront an unbeatable foe how many men actually do that how many men are actually willing to risk everything for even the slimmest chance of success you all right baby metal like this toughness like this is not common it's not common so he gets oh that was right on the chin it looked like that's the fight. So he gets an A-plus for, for effort, most definitely. He gets an A-plus for effort, but now his friend has to step in and kind of save him from himself. That's necessary at this point, because a man like this, he'll just keep getting up over and over and over again. Um, and sometimes you have to tell a man when he's done. You have to step in. You, you have to say you're done. No more. I thought you were going to put on a better shoe, man. You're working, my man. So in, in this case, was that impressive? Yes and no. Uh, yes in the sense that it's always impressive to see a man beat down other men, especially multiple men. But no in the sense that it's, it was very clear that these men, that Kimbo Slice outclassed these men by a considerable, de by a, by a considerable degree. So is it impressive? Yes and no. Don't forget. 
But one thing that you cannot deny it is, is that it is entertaining. It's it's pure entertainment. You all right, man? We got to talk for you right here. And, you know, the great thing about situations like this, um, scenarios like this, is that even though he lost, his display of courage earned him respect. It's a very uh, strange thing, very almost surreal thing in combat sports. It's one of, it's, it's some, it's one of those situations that even when you lose, you can still win. Squeak, give him that shit right there. That's a sublime shit. And um, he's earned his respect amongst these men here. So, yeah, that was cool. That was good stuff. Good stuff. Pure entertainment.